Fernandez Show is a talk show channeled spontaneously from source to edify and help raise the vibrations of truthers, starseeds, Christic alchemists, and others who have seen through this illusionary matrix into messianic consciousness by discussing hidden knowledge, higher dimensions, and manifesting so that we can shine our light for everyone to see and co-create the earth that we know we actually deserve to live in. Don't! I gotta go! I'm working on the show! Hey guys, welcome back to the Joel Fernandez Show! I'm Joel Fernandez, and I'm just filming this episode in my car because honestly, it's like every day is just super busy. Blazing down the road in my RX-8. That's how we roll. That's how we roll. It was a manifestation that got me this car because honestly, like, I was thinking every day, I got a good car. It was a Honda Accord, you know? Good old car that got me from point A to point B. Why would you need anything better than that? Until I realized that source is abundance. Source literally is abundance. When I tapped into that, I was like, why don't I want anything better? Why don't I want something to enjoy? And now, but there are those moments when I really enjoy revving the engine, getting that extra power in. That's the abundance that all of us have access to. We all have access to this very same abundance. And that's what Source wants for each and every one of us. It's literally our destiny to live out our fullest potential. Everything less than that is us cutting our own legs out from under us. Why would we want to do that? Why would we want to do that? There's no good answer except that the enemy has planted lies because it's definitely not in the kingdom of darkness's best interest that we fulfill our destiny. So we gotta break out of that paradigm, break out of that mindset, and really step up and manifest our best lives yet. Really step up and manifest our best lives yet. And that's what's been happening to me. That's why I've been so busy constantly you know, hanging out with lions, attending these rallies. Now we got the solidarity movement going. And that's like back in Poland when they had the solidarity movement that basically stopped the communists. But now we're holding all these people accountable. We're holding them accountable. The people have demanded elections on the local levels of judges, you know, for parental consent for whatever they're doing to our children in terms of education and medical procedures. Clergy want the rights to assemble in public. All of these things are part of, you would assume, our basic rights, but we gotta hold these tyrants accountable because the only thing necessary for evil to flourish is for good people to do nothing. That's what it's come down to. Good people have just been silent, complacent, and look at where it's gotten us. So, you know, they haven't extinguished us we're not gone anywhere, but we're standing up now and we've got to reclaim what was stolen from us in the first place. So I'm probably going to be putting some more footage about that kind of stuff uh, later on in the show. But before I get into that, I actually want to talk about the calendar because that's like the major thing that I'm sharing right now. The calendar that has come out is already, it's already like the last month of the it's already like the last month of the year, according to the syncretic calendar, that is. And it's crazy how that's happened because, like, I remember, like, it was just a little while ago, I was thinking, like, oh, I, I still have three months to get the calendar for next year in order. And all of a sudden, here I am. And the calendar will be ready a week before the solstice. So if you email me, I'll send you a new copy of the calendar once it's released in and around the 13th there. But if you've already emailed me, I'll just shoot you off a copy of all of that stuff. The updated dates for the solstices and all the times that the planets 
enter the signs in the tropical zodiac. All of that stuff is updated for this year. The 10th year since this download came to me. Like, I can't even believe this. It's already 10 years since the Great Awakening. And I'm already walking in it. I've already manifested so much and I'm learning so much. But here I am for my musical rehearsal for the weekend. And I'm actually gonna cut the video here and show you a time lapse of me updating all the info for this next year and how I do that for the calendar. So I'll check you guys after that and we'll put in some footage from the rally as well. Stay tuned for that. And the first thing we have to do when we're getting our dates together are get all of the Sundays according to the Gregorian calendar listed out. And that's going to be our correspondence between the wheel of the calendar year and its correspondence in Gregorian calendar BS. <laughs> but anyway, here I am gathering the lunar eclipses and the solar eclipses. And now I'm working on putting together every single moon of the year. This is a chart, and this is a really great website, timeanddate.com. You can check it out, and you get all the times, and everything is up here. And then uh, making sure that if the time given for a particular event is before sunrise, I got to make sure that uh, it still counts as the previous day, but that's just the division of the day according to the calendar as I see it because like Aries is the head of the year so is the sunrise and I'm just marking a star next to all the dates that have the times that are after midnight and before sunrise for the next day so like I said technically for the day before and so here I am just naming the full moons of every quarter basically according to the same chart that is in the write-up you'll get this if you email me for the calendar I'll send all of this right up to you as well, but it will be neatly done in a digital format, and you'll see a bit of that later on in this episode as well. And last but not least, we gather together all the times according to the lunar dates when it lines up with my sun sign in my natal chart. So that's what we do every year, and that's basically the time when the seed is activated. And just going through the whole year and getting all of that information. And then we just copy that to our list. Just like that. The date and the time. That's, of course, local time. And again, if it's before sunrise, we put that asterisk next to it. And once that's all done, we're going to go to Stellarium. And we're actually going to make sure we get the right days for the retrograde because sometimes with the ephemerides they don't line up exactly and so we're going to take care of that right now and then i'm just going to go down to the illustrator page where i have all the information set up and we're going to change all the information here and this year it's a partial eclipse so we're going to make a little different logo and update those days and update the dates for the full moons in accordance with local time of course and this year there's only 12 full moons so that frost moon had to go because the frost moon was the third moon of a four moon cycle this year has specifically 12 moons and of course we start putting the days when all the planets enter the different signs and retrogrades etc and i have this chart that took me quite a while to type up but just corresponds every single day in the Arostar Kumbi calendar to every single day in the Gregorian calendar, including for leap years and all that stuff. So that took me quite a while to put together because uh, it just kind of gets confusing sometimes. And if you got one day off, the whole thing goes off. So updating all these dates and, of course, this whole calendar that came as a download is uh like there's no coincidence just how everything just lines up 
everything just lines up and it all makes so much sense especially after like hearing other people talk about how you know why wasn't it changed in the last age basically it should have been like the tropic of gemini and the tropic of sagittarius it should have it should have been for 2000 years but for some reason they stuck with the original names and they never changed it something's off here but anyway that's what this calendar is all about with the new names i'm not saying by any means like the only reason i named it is because we need new names but i never intended to actually like start anything that's not my plan here it's just to it's not about the name it's about observing the actual clock in the sky it's not about like making our own clock up and saying okay it's gonna be this and you know be out of tune with nature and be out of tune with all of these rhythms so we gotta actually know the rhythms and harness them for ourselves then we'll actually walk in that kind of potential but uh here i am just double checking some ephem ephemerides ephemerides that's the word, ephemerides. Anyway. Organization and spacing everything out. When I was working in printing, that gave me kind of a good eye for that. But after that, it just became a habit. But here I am on the calendar updating it to the 10th year. 10th year? It doesn't seem that long ago at all. But it's 10 years. And just updating every single Sunday marking so that you can tell which day of the week it is. And corresponding with the Gregorian calendar just for reference. But this is by no means like standardized by the Gregorian calendar at all. And now I have to update each of the days of the week. So make sure the right color is on the right day for the seven day cycle. So I just go around and do that. And this one was kind of easy because it was just one day off this year. So just co copy the color just right down the row and you're good. And all of these vectors and images and everything were made by me because uh, it just is all one unit. It just all came through one unit. And that's how Source did it. It's like, boom, it all came through. And then just, yeah, adjusting the days so that they align with the actual yellow. I think I spotted a mistake here. So I'm just clearing that up making sure they align with the yellow day and just going around the calendar doing that i actually kind of enjoy this kind of work even though it can be really tedious but it's all good it's all good it's good next of course we have the moons so moving the phases of the moon to their correct days along the axes of the moon or the track of the moon and then yeah then i'll be naming the moons and making sure every single uh, seed time is also put on the chart. That's what those red squares are and the times are actually those cruxes. And that's just my thing. Like, <laughs> that's my alignment. It's not about anybody else's. Unless you have the sun in Virgo 2306. That's kind of pretty cool. Anyway, <laughs> aligning these lunar phases and making sure like see the lunar phases never align with the months lunar time is something completely different this is what people need to realize there's the calendar of the year the physical calendar and then there's the calendar of the moon or the spiritual or emotional calendar and i mean people have known this for ages with the new moons and the full moons and you know like you were moonstruck or a lunatic that's basically what it means and so people have known this and the light from the moon is completely different than the light of the sun it's it's like what are these things going on here but you know people there's just so much intrigue in the whole world that we haven't even scratched the surface 
but it's just amazing waking up to who we've actually come here to be. And I'm watching a really neat documentary in the background. If you can catch really quick glimpses of it. I've been listening to it a couple times now. It's just like everything. It's taking me a while to absorb that kind of information. But man, it's an amazing time just to reveal all of this stuff. So here I am uh, setting up the Ramadan month. And that's going to be the one that has a yellow or orange or amber track within the moon track. And then just going down the year, making sure all these numbers align, putting the times in and making sure if it's the day before, then I put it the day before so that, you know, then the star means it's the next day in the Gregorian calendar. So these are the eclipses putting in the partial eclipse for the sun this year. Uh, what's going on here? I think I had a bit of trouble coloring it up, but anyway, let's try that again. There we go. Boom. Okay. Lunar eclipse. There we go. There's only two eclipses this year. And of course they happen in different parts of the world. Well, the solar eclipse at least. I don't know about... Lunar eclipses and how those work, but it's a bit different. I guess you could see it from wherever you can see the moon, right? But the sun, I don't know. Is that Does that really work that way? We'll have to find out. We'll have to find out. But anyway, whenever the lunar eclipse happens, that's when I put it on the calendar, no matter where it is. And so I'm putting in the tracks for Mercury here, uh, adjusting the signs, and of course putting in the retrogrades wherever they fit in there's a retrograde there boom cancel that and so the red means it starts retrograde and then the green day means that it's finished retrograding so this is actually pretty cool and now I'm just doing the Venus track making sure all these signs are aligned and it's pretty cool because you can kind of see like how periodic it is when you're doing this kind of stuff. Oh, Roch and Robin in the background. Uh, fitting in Mars. Mercury, of course, has the most signs and the most action. Then the further out you go, the slower they move. And this year, Saturn only has one retrograde. And that's it. Mercury has to go through like 12 signs every year, sometimes even more. But this year, just 12. But then there's a retrograde too, which if they go backward into a sign, then they got to come back through those signs again. Saturn is so far out that it's been in Aquarius for the last two, two and a half years. So pretty crazy stuff. This is the world we live in, guys. It is a fairy tale come alive. And uh, this is the Jupiter track, but literally a fairy tale come alive. And that's what this calendar also showed me. It's just like how much of the world do you not understand and the flow of energy. When we can harness this kind of energy, this is just a step towards harnessing that etheric energy. That all these dome structures and everything around the world with these uh, turrets and cupolas, it all served a different purpose in the past. Well, let's go to those pictographs, which I said I would be adding because those are your actual signs. Like, honestly, for the lunar days and all those designations, it's not Chinese at all. I just use the Chinese characters because each character represents a word. But, you know, that's not Chinese. For the Chinese constellations, it's a different thing. But for the lunar calendar, it's something else. So when I put these into Illustrator, I just move them down. To a decent size and then just start drawing over it and these are just like ideograms i'm not making these like super detailed representations of the symbols they're just the basic signs so i just go over that and make sure you know to get all the symbols nicely spaced let's speed this up shall we
So yeah, in the meantime, I'm watching that documentary in the background. You can catch bits of like that dome and some of the old photographs and all that kind of stuff, man. Buried buildings. It's crazy what we don't know about our past, but we're awakening. And that's what this all is about also, like drawing this kind of stuff and tapping everything back into this mindset of where we've come from. Well, like what we've lost as a heritage. Here we have a little bit of the documentary. Enjoy this little bit. Talking about star forts. Star forts are one of my most favorite things that exist from the old world. Anyway, that was pretty cool. But I'm just putting these logos or ideograms, I guess, over the appropriate Chinese symbol because, like I said, these lunar designations, they don't come from Chinese. The Chinese constellations, another thing. But this, yeah, this is my own little thing. So now I'm also changing the days of each of the lunar days per lunar month. And it's the same word it means the same thing but i'm just using my own pictograms and there we go and i like the pink color so i ended up not changing that calendar 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 we are entering or actually we already have entered a new age but what's so funny and this was brought to my attention. Actually, I thought about this even in grade school, but it never really clicked. And you have like the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn, right? 
but it's been over 2,000 years since the sun has been in either of those constellations during the time of the solstices. So I'm wondering, like, didn't anybody realize, like, the constellations aren't lining up and we're actually in the wrong time? I don't know. It must have been an age of darkness, man, because honestly, like, think about it. People were just continuing on with the same old and they were actually in the wrong era. But anyway, we're in this era. We know what we're doing. We're waking up reclaiming that sovereignty that's what it's all about and that authority that we actually have as you know being made in the image of Elohim literally with that creative word we actually speak into existence and so much has just been unfolding and being made known to me now that like I said with the solidarity movement that Arthur has announced it's like we're literally entering into a new phase of doing things we're holding these people accountable. You know, we deserve to have referendums on issues that actually matter. And it's so funny because in Calgary, they made us vote on whether to add fluoride to the drinking water. And right after that, city council votes and says, yeah, we're adding fluoride. Like, why would they have to vote a second time when people already voted the first time? It's just a big, yeah, never mind, never mind. We're not here to harp on the kingdom of darkness. We're here to build up that kingdom of light. So that's why I'm hanging out with Arthur. That's why I'm breaking through these shackles and literally just in association with those lions that are actually rising up and making the changes in the world that we know we deserve. We know we deserve it. That's what we're here to do. We're here to live our best life yet. We're not here to be controlled or manipulated or coerced or any of that stuff so I'm gonna be editing in some video from the March honestly it's like YouTube says you know you can't put anything that disagrees with our community guidelines but it does say like you can put it up if it doesn't promote violence if it doesn't promote it if you're just putting it up as an alternative way of looking at things exposing it and of course they say it yeah, if you're satirizing this kind of stuff, go for it. But, nah. I'm just going to put the video up. You guys make of it what you will. And this is literally what's going on in the world today. I'm sorry. But I don't want to be a, an emperor. That's not my business. I don't want to rule or conquer anyone. I should like to help everyone if possible. Jew, Gentile, black man, white. We all want to help one another. Human beings are like that. We want to live by each other's happiness, not by each other's misery. We don't want to hate and despise one another. In this world, there's room for everyone, and the good earth is rich and can provide for everyone. The way of life can be free and beautiful, but we have lost the way. Greed has poisoned men's souls, has barricaded the world with hate, has goose-stepped us into misery and bloodshed. We have developed speed, but we have shut ourselves in. Machinery that gives abundance has left us in want. Our knowledge has made us cynical, our cleverness hard and unkind. We think too much and feel too little. More than machinery, we need humanity. More than cleverness, we need kindness and gentleness. Without these qualities, life will be violent and all will be lost. The aeroplane and the radio have brought us closer together. The very nature of these inventions cries out for the goodness in men, cries out for universal brotherhood, for the unity of us all. Even now, my voice is reaching millions throughout the world. Millions of despairing men, women, and little children. Victims of a system that makes men torture and imprison innocent people. To those who can hear me, I say, do not despair. The misery that is now upon us is but the passing of greed. The bitterness of men who fear the way of human progress. The hate of men will pass and dictators die. And the power they took from the people will return to the people. And so long as men die, Liberty will never perish. Soldiers, don't give yourselves to brutes. Men who despise you, enslave you, who regiment your lives, tell you what to do, what to think, and what to feel, who drill you, diet you, treat you like cattle, use you as cannon fodder. Don't give yourselves to these unnatural men, machine men with machine minds and machine hearts. You are not machines. You are not cattle. You are men. You have the love of humanity in your hearts. You don't hate. Only the unloved hate, the unloved and the unnatural. 
Soldiers, don't fight for slavery, fight for liberty. In the 17th chapter of St. Luke it is written, the kingdom of God is within man, not one man nor a group of men, but in all men, in you. You, the people, have the power. The power to create machines, the power to create happiness. You, the people, have the power to make this life free and beautiful, to make this life a wonderful adventure. Then in the name of democracy, let us use that power. Let us all unite. Let us fight for a new world, a decent world that will give men a chance to work, that will give youth a future and old age a security. By the promise of these things, brutes have risen to power, but they lie, they do not fulfill that promise, they never will. Dictators free themselves, but they enslave the people. Now let us fight to fulfill that promise. Let us fight to free the world, to do away with national barriers, to do away with greed, with hate and intolerance. Let us fight for a world of reason. A world where science and progress will lead to all men's happiness. Soldiers, in the name of democracy, let us all unite! So right before the rally, we actually stopped by a friend of mine's shop, just for some few necessities. And you can see that they actually have this sign posted outside because everything that the government's doing is unlawful. And when you walk in, they have all these documentations spread out for anybody to have a deeper look at. And there's all kinds of information here for anybody to see. This one's talking about how the FDA won't get its final studies in till a few years down the road. Nuremberg's coming folks, it's coming. But we didn't stay too long there because we had a rally to go to. Here's how I see it. Evil has no counterpart. There is no equal to evil. There is only the absence of evil. And that absence is filled with nothing but positivity. You get creativity, religion, spirituality, all the positive things fill the absence of evil and stand united against it. And that is what we all embody here today. So it's not a light first dark battle. It's not a fight at all. It's a marathon. And we're all going to pass the baton from one another until we win the race. The fire for freedom burns at the end of that finish line. And the closer that we get, the shine will, bright, will be bright on us. And the darkness will not be able to prevail. These people were enslaved. Not because of politicians telling them what to do, but because they had actually, if you can imagine, freely chosen their enslavement. They weren't free in their mind, their body, or their soul. I invite you all for a moment to just imagine with me, what if you woke up tomorrow and because we had fought the good fight, all the restrictions were lifted. There were no more vax passes, there were no more masks, and we regained our freedom. Would we really feel free? Or, let's say we wake up tomorrow and nothing had changed. Would we feel free then? Well, maybe, maybe not. You see, we have the capacity to feel free right now. This week, I invite and encourage all of you to think free, act free, be free. Own it. Find your way, because you can do this. Do this one radical thing. Smile at someone. This one radical action can ripple out and impact that other person. 
a community and this whole city because not only are you sharing your joy but you're modeling what freedom looks like when we think free act free and be free we give others permission to do it even if it's subconscious in one week by all of us modeling what freedom looks like day to day we will not only further the movement but just as importantly you will feel the confidence and courage to deeply know you are already free and always were. So remember, free people free themselves and others. Thank you. We are one. We are one. But we are many. But we are many. And from all the lands on earth we come. And from all the lands on earth we come. We share a dream. And sing with our voice. And sing with our voice. I am. I am. Let me hear that again. I am. One more time. I am. You are. You are. We are. We are. Canadians. Canadians. Woo! Okay, let's get out there and crush a good march. I love you guys. Keep your chins up and remember every single day is a gift. Yeah. Brother in arms. Brother in Fresh off the CBC, hey? <laughs> yeah. She's feeling better now. Got her out of the ice. Yeah, yeah. Got her on some ivermectin, eh? Got her right. out of it. Right.
Solidarity Movement of Canada, and we are basing it on a Polish movement that I saw growing up in 1980s when we were under the boot of the communists. Uh, in Poland, I saw people coming together when they had enough of few people ruling over the entire nations. They had enough of the tyrants and they have created a movement, Solidarity, which in Polish is Solidarność. And when I saw these banners, I remember till today when people started to come together and they started to unite and uh, encourage one another, help one another in solidarity. It was one of the most beautiful things I've seen in my entire life. And throughout the 80s, yes, it was tough, it was crazy. Some died, some went through hell on earth. But in 1989, the neck of the Soviets was broken. And as you know from history, the, the Bolshevik Empire crumbled. So we decided to open solidarity movement in Canada. Hopefully that will go to other places and people will learn from history that it is possible to hold the tyrants accountable. So join solidaritymovementofcanada.com, join and let's unite under one banner. It doesn't matter what your faith is. It doesn't matter what tribe you come from. It doesn't matter what part of the world you come from. Solidarity movement is for people that love the freedom, that love justice, that are sick and tired of the tyrants, murdering people at this time. We see the fruits of their labor and they're rotten, they're murderers, and we want to unite the clans and come together under one banner, Solidarity. Solidarity Movement of Canada.com. Join. So that was another weekend march here at Calgary. As you can see, a lot of people are turning out because we don't want to be controlled by all this lies and manipulation and all of that stuff. We're born free, we're sovereign, and we're taking our power back from those tyrants. Lest we forget, folks. Lest we forget. And shout out to all the police who guarded the traffic and made sure everything went all right. And it not it ironic that they have the fasci on both sides of this bench? We'll talk about that in another episode. The following is something to think about from Strange Landings TV. <laughs> Welcome everybody, this is Givgini again. And uh, I just need to be very clear here. I am not Joel Fernandez, okay? Joel Fernandez is my good friend. He is my boss. But I am definitely not Joel Fernandez. People tend to mistake this because uh, I look a lot like him, they say. Uh, maybe we just spend a lot of time together and, you know, good looks tend to rub off on each other. But let's get right to today's topic. Today we are talking about these ancient buildings that actually span our entire world. We can find buildings like this all over our realm and it's curious because when you look at even 19th century photographs, we see buildings like this with entrances and windows under the ground level. And it looks like the people spent hours trying to excavate these areas just to lay the foundation. Now, in our modern time, we have equipment like backhoes, which make this much easier. But imagine doing this all by hand with a spade. It's a very interesting question. And when we look at it, when we actually do some excavation, we realize that these doors and entrances on the basement is actually the building's original first floor. And it's not that it was some inherited foundation from a time long past, we actually see that the architecture lines up between that floor and the floor above it. 
many buildings with stairs going up to a second floor entrance or stairs going down to the original floor entrance. All of these are very interesting curiosities when we look at these old photographs and even just walking down the street in older parts of our own cities. We find buildings like this and it begs the question, what history are we actually inheriting that we know nothing about? Why are the ancient photos of 19th century cities look like they're deserted at high noon? Amid the backdrop of these magnificent and colossal architectural structures, we see roads that are so neglected that they're uneven and filled with mud. Where did all this mud come from? What is our true history? I, I was just doing an interesting segment because I saw that building and I thought the people might want to know. Next time? All right. Well, guys, that does it for this episode. I'll catch you in the next episode with uh, a little more information on this very topic. This is so hard for people to understand. Try and follow me here, okay? Your body, your choice. Unless it has to do with the vaccine. In which case, your body, the government, your employer, and possibly your school's choice. But you should get the vaccine. Because then you don't have to wear a mask anymore. Unless you still have to wear a mask. But you won't get COVID again. Unless you happen to get COVID again. But you're protected from the other variants. Except that you're not. <laughs> but you should totally get it because it protects other people unless those other people happen to get COVID from you. Guys, there's no side effects unless you happen to experience some of the side effects. I don't know why this is so hard for people to follow. You don't have to wear a mask unless you do. You can't get sick again unless you do. And there's no side effects unless you experience them. Do the right thing. Don't be an asshole.